पादशंकर लोकशंकर न शास्ता न शास्त्र न शिष्यो न शिक्षा न चव न चाहन न चा प्रपंच स्वूपावबोधो विकल्पा सहिष्णु तदेको वशिष्ट शिव केवलोहम सो न चा प्रपंच कम अप टू दैट सो इन लाइफ इट इज डिफिकल्ट फॉर पीपल टू एप्रिशिएट and it may sound a bit odd also but the truth is all assertions are wrong and only negation is right for example what all you say about yourself will be wrong and when you start negating all your imaginations about yourself you are moving towards the truth of yourself and what applies to you applies to the real which we call the god therefore in life it is necessary to question and negate at every stage we have to question and negate like for example there are so many plants and in the world so by negating and negating we have come to the right plant that is edible okay therefore even uh, suppose somebody is ill then uh, they examine what are the things that he has to dismiss put aside that is how the illness is cured therefore in life the essence of uh, the essence of uh, moving forward is to question and uh, negate this is very essential and uh, when you question and negate another name for that is revolt you have to revolt it is not a political revolt or uh, it is uh, some bloody revolt it is uh, a revolt uh, in the consciousness against its own content so you have a variety of ideas in the consciousness about yourself that is the content of consciousness that you have to examine question and uh, dismiss therefore the consciousness by this process of revolt which is essentially questioning and negating purges itself of all wrong notions by doing that you arrive at the true self so as we sit here we have a sense of the self which is false and then there is the higher self the true self you are the true self no one here it's not that you are the now false self in due course of time by particular methodology and all that ishwara's grace guru's grace then you will become the higher self wrong you are the true self no one here and you are never the false self so you need not search for the true self because you are the true self no one here what what are you going to search for so only you should give up the false ideas about yourself okay you see what is the reason what is the reason or rationale to give up to examine question and then dismiss the false ideas will take you to the truth that sounds very rational you know what is uh, there is no fallacy in it the logical fallacy is not there so when you are the true self no one here what all now you have to do what is left now to do just a question your own imagination of yourself and then examine and then negate dismiss that is all you have to do nothing more you have to do that is the logic 
and then uh, you should have some love for the Shastra also. Shastra also is suggesting that you need not become anything, you need not gain anything, you are the true self, no one here, only give up the false ideas about yourself. That is what the Shastra is saying. Therefore, this revolt is uh, very important in one's life. You see, you have to understand that you are not the body and you are not the comforts and discomforts of the body and also you are not the mind and the mind is likely to have many fanciful ideas so you will have to examine and dismiss all these fanciful ideas that are there in the mind then you have to examine the desires and fears that are there in the mind also and, and negate them. So there is so much of a negation to be done. It is like every day morning you clean up the, you clean the house, take a broomstick, clean the house, take a wet mop and, and wet uh, mop they call it and mop the house and then uh, take a soap and uh, clean the body. You have to do that. Every day you have to do that. That doesn't, uh, you don't create a new house every day or a new body. You just keep it free from all the dross that accumulates. Therefore, uh, they keep the house home well. What does it mean? They take, they, they do the job of dismissal of the impurities. He keeps good hygiene. What does it mean? There is no good hygiene. He will bring a purchase of good hygiene and put on his head or what? There is nothing like a good hygiene. What you call good hygiene is nothing but take a soap and remove the impurities. Therefore, that is how life moves forward. And so you have to understand the significance of negation. That is the point. Therefore, you are not, you have nothing to do with the desires and fears that the mind comes out, comes up with. And also, the society compels you to play a role. That role is not valid. It is not real. You may have to dismiss or negate that role also. The society tells that you are such and such person. You have to dismiss that also. For example, the society tells you are Brahmana and you have to say, Naham Brahmanaha, to know the truth of the self. Therefore, uh, you have to give up the false. That is all you have to do. When you give up the false, the truth which is ever there comes into its own. This is the significance of negation that you find in the, the Shishloki. And as we started negating, so four negations in the first line and the two in the second line we have finished and now we come to the negation of the prapancha, nachayam prapancha. So, that prapancha means the vast world. The pancha, pachi vistare, which we have seen, therefore it, it is very vast and very variegated and multitudinous. That is what the world is. So, all those things uh, uh, make us um, uh, make us feel uh, amazed, and uh, we are led to believe that it is real. Because the blessed prapancha, by its, as its name suggests, the very name suggests, is very vast and full of variety and full of uh, multiplicity. So what they call multifarious world. That is the translation for the word prapancha, the multifarious world. So this multifarious world, which seems very big, vast and overwhelming, that is how it, it appears. But you have to understand, however much it may look real, it is not real. Nachayam prapanchaha. This is how the unreal is. The unreal, it looks real. 
But if you pay attention carefully, if you examine carefully, it emerges as unreal. What is the test of real and unreal? So anything which is transient means it is there in the flow of time for a while and then it vanishes. That is unreal. Anything which is born in time and uh, ends in time is unreal. That is the acid test. And uh, the real is not afraid of time. The unreal is afraid of time. Like ice cream. When you purchase ice cream, uh, in India we purchase it. So uh, you purchase it and bring home. So he puts it, he packs it and gives you. But you have to go home quickly. Otherwise, if you go home slowly, then uh, the ice cream will vanish. You will be left with some syrup, sugar syrup with some flavors and all that. Therefore, you have to understand, ice cream is not real. That is the test of time. The real will not be like that. The real will not be afraid of time. The real, uh, it is timeless. Time cannot limit it. So, therefore, that is the acid test, time, time test. Anything which is transient in the flow of time is unreal. You increase a little uh, volume, yeah. And uh, you see, then uh, the blessed thing, the world which is unreal, how come it looks so real? What is the reason? What could be the reason for that? You know why it looks so real? Because uh, you believe in it. You believe in it. People are like that. You see, uh, father and mother, uh, they brought their son to me and uh, suggested uh, to teach some mathematics so that he will get a good rank and uh, join engineering course. Okay. Then uh, I started, out of goodwill I started teaching. I was a uh, good friends to the, with them. I started teaching. Within two, three days, I understood that he has no appetite for mathematics. I talked with him. There is no point in me becoming angry because he is unable to catch the mathematics. Then I asked him, what is your interest? Do you have interest in this game of mathematics? He said, I don't have interest. That's why I'm unable to grasp it and uh, it is uh, it is uh, repelled. It is bouncing off from him. And he said, I don't have interest in it. Then why are you studying it? My parents pushed me into it. They want me to join engineering. Then I, mainly the mother, father, father is busy with some business deals and business, he's a businessman. He's busy with his business. Mother is taking care of all these uh, family issues. And so I asked him, you tell your mother to meet me one time. So she came. And I told her, why you are pushing your son into engineering? You are making a mistake. He, he doesn't have appetite for uh, mathematics. So no, no, you are a great teacher of mathematics. It is not about my greatness of teaching mathematics and all that. He just doesn't have appetite for mathematics. He doesn't want to join engineering. He wants to join BCom. And uh, you are business people, let him study BCom. And he will help you in business also. You need not look for his employment. He can employ half a dozen other people. So you go for that. They did not agree. You know what she says? I see him as an engineer. That is my dream. And therefore you have to teach him. I continued to teach for some more time, out of uh, some goodwill. But then a point came where it did not move any further. I dropped out. I did not teach him any further. He also stopped coming to me because he doesn't have interest in it. Then they pushed him into some other tutorial. And after two years I met him unexpectedly. Hey, how are you doing? He said, I am not doing well. What are you doing? I could not get a seat in engineering. I passed barely. 
but in india india is uh, like that very sad i am sorry to say that you can purchase a seat in the college there are colleges exclusively for those students who cannot qualify to become engineers these are the engineering colleges uh, are they, if your son is not eligible to become an engineer you bring him and put in our engineering college we will see that he will get a degree eventually so that kind of colleges are there do you know what is the name of those colleges donation colleges that is the name of the college plenty of them and so he was pushed into a donation college because they are business people they have money and in the donation college he was studying first year he did not pass one subject in first year now he is in second year then i said why don't you stop it and go to bcom my parents don't allow me god bless you i left it and then again i see sahim after two years what are you doing i could never pass anything in the engineering and now i am doing something else so he told something so these people they want to believe in the unreal you cannot convince them these parents father is not so much a bent upon it but the mother she sees an engineer and why not why not get it and so she spends money she pushes him and pushes him and uh, even when it is failing she pushes a little further believes that by pushing and pushing it comes real but unfortunately it remains a dream because to begin with it is not real did i give the right example so life is like that so this world it appears real to you only because you believe in it it is not real you believe in it therefore it appears real to you you start doubting it is the world real you raise the question then uh, the moment you doubt its reality it stops appearing as real it may not appear unreal right away but at least you do not get carried away that it is real it stops appearing real okay there is a test for it you see suppose you are in love with somebody let us say love means you need not be wife husband love only any kind of love father son daughter brother sister there is love and friends these are all relations only so you are in love with somebody now you give reality to that love right so love is real so there are big big dialogues also love is sacred love is real democratic country we are free people love is everything in life like that uh, uh, this is not vedantic love i am telling the love between these young people you know so when you are love with somebody in love with somebody you give a reality to that love and uh, you give uh, your love you, you imagine your love is the most powerful all powerful and also you say it is everlasting our love is so powerful that even if devatas come and stop it we will not uh, go back we continue with it and uh, eight eight seven uh, births also the love will continue this is how it appears why it appears so because you believe in it you believe in it and you give a reality to that love but life is not like that you know the love comes to an end abruptly one day it comes to an end then somebody like me question say hey, you were saying it was everlasting love and all that you know the answer you get i thought it was real okay but now what did you find i find that it is not real this is the life so mother believes that her son is her life she loves the son but she lives to see a day 
when she discovers that her love is not real. The day will come sooner only, not later. The moment he gets married, and then hilta uh, hilta hai, and then she discovers that this love is not real. Father discovers much earlier, mother takes a little more time. The world is like that. Then husband and wife also similar. So, but then uh, there is a principle of coexistence. So, therefore, what you call love, it proves to be, it is, it is no more as intense as it was at one time. But uh, we continue with it by default most of the time. The social conditioning, etc. will be there. Back in India, so marriage is final. Yeah, it is final for the life. That kind of a social environment is there. Therefore, that sustains the marriage. That social structure under the cultural conditioning and then uh, uh, a few other the religious conditioning, all of them put together, they sustain the marriage. The marriage goes on. The love which was felt on day one, it, it is not there anymore. And from then onwards, it is not love, it is convenience. It is by default, it will be like that. Now, there may be worthy exceptions, okay? Please take it easy. And uh, therefore, uh, what you think, uh, what you thought was real, maybe I gave a wrong example. Uh, so, what I thought was real, and proves to be unreal, and now it is not real anymore. You see, once I went to Rishikesh, a, a group of people came to see me. On my way to Rishikesh, in Delhi, I was there for two, three days. Uh, some half a dozen or even a dozen people, all elderly people, men and women, they came to see me. Maharaj, you have to give us an advice. How do you know that I give advice? No, no, people told us. We came to know that you know well. You are a scholar, this and that. Okay, what advice we have to give? You see, we cannot live without Guru, without our Guru Maharaj. So and so is our Guru Maharaj. And we live only because he is hale and healthy. But nowadays he is becoming sick. And the doctor tells he won't live for any length of time, maybe a few months only. And we cannot live without him. We all decided to commit suicide if he dies. <laughs> because we cannot live without him. How do you know? Yeah, we know. We can see that in our hearts. We cannot live without him. Then what advice I can give? I told you, you should not be like that. That is not called Guru Bhakti. You should not uh, talk like that. Even your Guru doesn't like it. And you should not go against the wish of your Guru. Your Guru doesn't like you to commit suicide and all that. In fact, stop talking that language. So, some discussion went on. Get, get a second opinion about his health and maybe some better treatment. He will live longer. Uh, talk, think in those lines. What advice I can give? That is the advice I gave. Then it was over, they went their way, and life time passed on. And then uh, suddenly, when I was returning from Rishikesh, after five years, I saw a few of them. And I asked, sir, I, it looks like I saw you, and I met you. <laughs> yes, we met you. When? Uh, four years back. Oh, where? In Delhi? Yes, in Delhi. Only. Oh, what could be the condi what, what could be the occasion? They told, we wanted to commit suicide. Ah, okay, that. So your guru is hale and healthy. They said, no, he died. When he died? Before six months he died. Then how come you were telling we will commit suicide without our guru? Why, why did you say? Like that, what was the reason? Without my answer, asking, they tell. It fe we felt like that in those days. But later when he died, we understood that it is not so. Therefore, without him also we can live. So that is what we realized after he died. <laughs> so life is way. Life is like that. Nachayam prapanchaha. This world, it is not world. It is world experience. You should understand 
that there is a difference between world and world experience. It is like, uh, is it a movie or is it a movie experience? It is only movie experience. There is no movie there. If there is a movie that a screen, the wall, all must have traveled a thousand miles by now. Nothing moves, everything <laughs> remains static there. It appears as a movie. It is not a movie. It appears as a movie. And uh, so you don't have a movie. If it appears but it is there as a movie, then you call it movie is. But it is not movie is. It is only movie appears. And uh, you experience the movie. Therefore, there is no movie. There is only movie experience. You got the point? Suppose uh, you are a fan of a cinema actor, hero. That is India. In America, you don't come across any fans. Like uh, big, big actors are there, you know. Nobody is a fan for them. No fan club. No fans. You don't see it. Whereas in India, every silly actor has a fan base. And thousands of fans. And the fan club registered. <laughs> fan club registered. So and so actor fan club registered. And all these young people, unemployed, uneducated, roaming on the roads, they are all members of that fan club. <laughs> Very funny thing. So, they believe that what appears on the movie screen is real. They think it is real. You know, there was a, in Tamil Nadu, this is more in Tamil Nadu, and Andhra is uh, not very far behind, okay, the Andhra Pradesh. So in Tamil Nadu, there was a, there was a political a movie hero, and he joined politics. And then, uh, just elections are announced, and he floated a party, and he is the leader of the party, and election is going on. He told uh, his director, the cinema people, you take a movie in which I will be the good Samaritan doing all kinds of uh, fights and uh, uh, powerful uh, um, message against the villains and the saving people, that kind of a movie you make. So they made a movie. The name of the movie is uh, something like A Macho Man. Macho they say, right? That is the man. That is the name of the movie in Tamil. And in that, what he, in that movie, he is in the fifth floor. Suddenly he watches from the window and uh, he saw a young girl being persecuted or, uh, or uh, harassed by three, four uh, wrong villains, uh, rowdies. Then uh, from the fifth floor, he comes uh, down by jumping and jumping and jumping and beats them uh, black and blue and protects that girl. He repeats a few things like this, and he releases the movie. Just ten days before, the elections are going to be there, ten days or fifteen days, he releases the movie. The opposition parties <laughs> catch their heads. They go to the election commission, complaining. This kind of a movie he released, you, this is unfair, it is not a fair uh, playing field. He is getting uh, undue advantage. Uh, all people are seeing that movie. So this is not fair playing field. Then the election commission said, we don't have laws to prevent this kind of a thing. You believe me, he won the election, he became the chief minister, and he remained chief minister in Tamil Nadu for quite uh, length of time. And then in Andhra Pradesh, a cinema actor, he, he followed the same example, you know what what movie he released just before elections, one month before? Magadu, that was the movie he released. Which means macho man. <laughs> Again, some silly story of this nature. And the movie is released. Again, the opposition parties go and cry. Again, he won. And he became chief minister. What does it show to you? The movie is, it is real for them. They believe it is real. 
they believe it is real. There is no movie. There is only movie experience. You got the point? Similarly, there is no macho man there. There is no hero. There only you assume the hero in your experience. That's all. Similarly, there is no world. World is not. Na chayam prapanchaha. What does it mean? Suppose you say prapanchaha mithya, you will misinterpret it. To the extent you can. But now you misinterpret this, I will see how you will misinterpret it. Na chayam prapanchaha. Let me translate it to you. This world is a halfway real, halfway unreal. Is that the translation for that? Does it sound right? This world, you cannot define whether it is real or not. Does it sound right? Huh? How it sounds? It sounds as this world is not. Does it not sound like that? There is no equanimity. Equanimity, no. There is no <coughs> ambiguity from Shankara's side. The world is like Raju Sarpa. In the Raju Sarpa example, there is no Sarpa, but there is the experience of Sarpa. Because serpent experience creates a lot of fear, and you, you suffer from that fear for the length of time, uh, when the serpent experience persists, till you negate the serpent experience saying, there is no serpent, till then the fear would haunt you. So the world is same. So in the serpent experience, what will you say? Na sarpaha, nayam sarpaha, that is what they say. Nayam sarpaha, this is not the serpent. Now what he says here, nāyam prapanchaha, put a cha there to make the matter, nāchāyam prapanchaha. Therefore, you assume, you give reality to the world. What is the proof that the world is unreal? Transiency is the best proof of unreality. This is quantum physics. That's why, People, unless they know some physics, they cannot appreciate the Vedanta well. I see this all the time. Maybe great scholars, good meaning scholars, etc. And they say all the right words. But when it comes to comprehend the real, they fail. Because they don't have that scientific temper in them. You need to be scientific. You should not be emotional. And you should not be a believing person. If you are given to beliefs, then you will not come to the truth of the self or the Brahman. Therefore, you should be scientific and non, you should put the belief aside, which means you have a key, you have an open mind and you are very scientific. You see, I tell you how the science is. You see, suppose something is transient. It is unreal. Take the movie screen versus the movie scenes. The movie screen is permanent. Take like that in the example. Movie screen is permanent. It is not transient. It will be there. In India, the theatres are called 70 mm, 35 mm. What is this mm? The mm is the measurement of the lens, the projector lens. And when the lens has a more width, it is not 35, it is 70, double the width. The screen will be double the size, bigger screen. Okay? So 70 mm uh, screen. So those screens are very costly. And he purchases a 70 mm screen, the owner of the theater, and fixes it there. And it will serve the theater for uh, 20 years. It is a permanent thing there. Whereas movie scenes are ever changing. Therefore, which is real and which is unreal? Very obvious. The thing that doesn't change, the thing which is permanent, namely the screen, is real. The scenes on the screen are always unreal. 
you know you need not hesitate even because they are transient so transiency is the best proof of unreality okay you see what is transiency limited in time that is transiency so a particular thing is limited in time for one minute one minute time it is limited to one minute time means you see it for only one minute another thing you see it for uh, one year both are transient and both are unreal and what you have to understand is both are equally unreal just because one is transient in your time scale for only one minute the other is transient for one year that doesn't may make the one year transient thing more real than the one minute transient thing you understand you see you go to the movie on the movie screen an old man in the scene an old man is walking with his grandson that is the scene they are talking and walking so now the old man age is 75 years the grandson age is 10 years so now who is more real who is less real both are equally unreal eh? then what is the age of the old man is it 75 years or is it 2 minutes 2 minutes what is the age of the 10 year old boy 2 minutes so in one time scale one thing may appear longer and the other thing may appear shorter ultimately it comes to the same namely both are transient and hence they are unreal so you see whatever is limited in time it is limited in time it is also limited in space that's so why you should know some physics i have come across many vedanta scholars god bless them they are great scholars but they don't have any idea of space and time they say desha kala akasha kala like that the words they speak but the physics some basic physics not rocket science some basic physics of space and time they don't know that's why they will be saying all the right things because they have studied and by heart at them therefore they say the right things but uh, they do not know that the world is unreal for them in spite of saying all the right things for them the world is real and they admit it they admit and then uh, they believe that uh, not in this birth next birth the guru krupa the grace of the guru and the grace of ishwara will come and then i will know that the world is unreal as of now i don't know it but in future i will know not in this birth next birth like that uh, they build a, a system around uh, their ignorance instead of asking the question why am i ignorant so they decide that we are ignorant that cannot be altered and so that ignorance there is a reason for it and ishwara is involved in it therefore you and i we are small people we cannot do anything about it because ishwara is involved in the ignorance therefore so sing a few songs and recite a few verses and remain ignorant do i sound uh, harsh no i am not harsh i am telling you how things work in the world that is how the world is therefore why that why that kind of a situation how it came because they don't know anything about space and time what is space akasha what is time kala only that much they know nothing more for example if you say whatever is limited in space is also limited in time that goes above their heads okay you tell me vishnu is a gentleman very powerful big big gentleman <coughs> with four hands in vaikuntha okay 
is he limited in space or not? Eh? He is limited in space in two ways. One, he has a shape which is limited in space and he lives in a place which is limitation in space. Now when he is limited in space, if you know any little physics, you should immediately, you will immediately understand that the blessed Vishnu must be limited in time also. You should understand. But you don't understand. And you don't want to understand. Do you follow? Why my prarabdha is like this? Why I say these things? What kind of prarabdha it is? Because all our vardis, they don't want to discuss it. For them it doesn't occur that a thing, even if it is a God with a given shape, being limited in time, cannot be eternal. It will be limited in space, therefore limited in time also. Because space and time go together. Why Rama is no more? I mean, Rama as a person is no more. Why? Because Rama as a person is limited in space, therefore limited in time. Same is the case with Krishna. But then we are studying Gita. So the, the Krishna of Gita that you are studying is not limited in space. He is Akhandaha. He is not limited in space. Anantaha, Achyutaha, Akhandaha. He is not limited in space. And therefore, he is not limited in time also. He is Vishnu, means all pervading. He pervades the space also. He is spaceless, pervades the space, not limited in space. That's why he is called Vishnu. And therefore, he is Anantaha. Hmm? So people should understand some basic things. If this is the reality situation with gods, then what to speak the reality of the men and the world and people and other things of the world? What is left now as real? Nothing is left as real now. So, this is a funny world that uh, they don't want to know the real, unreal nature of the world. Then uh, the Vedanta Guru center into the picture. At least they should be Faithful to the Shastra. And the Shishloki is a very popular text of Shankara. And Madhusudana Saraswati wrote a wonderful commentary. And Brahmananda Saraswati wrote a commentary on commentary. And Bellangona Ramaraya Kavi wrote another great commentary. That is this Dashishloki of Shankara. And what Shankara is saying in the Dashishloki? Nachayam Prapanchaha. What is your problem? You should declare, at least declare like this, at least. Sri Shankara says that this world has no existence. Say that. Be faithful, be honest. Why do you want to dilly-dally with it? What is the reason? No, no, we have to accommodate the world. Why should you accommodate the world? You have to accommodate the truth, not the world. So, what kind of logic it is? Therefore, this has uh, crept into Vedantic circles. That's why I am saying. It has crept into the Vedantic circles so much so, they started a kind of twisting and distorting the word Mithya. Now the word Mithya, mithya is myth. But no, they, they have made a created a lot of confusion about the word mithya. Once uh, some mis wrong meaning or uh, confused meaning is uh, given to a word and that becomes popular that way, now you cannot use it anymore. For example, if you go to some of these uh, standard uh, Victorian English, so when uh, your mind is quiet, you are a gayish person. Like that, Bertrand Russell and other Acharyas write like that. But now you cannot use that word. 
because now that word you you cannot use it. I have used a word uh, in one of the classes which I studied in the uh, high school. And then I finished the class and coming somebody told me, Swamiji, that word is not used here. Oh, it is not used? No. Then, uh, then what should I do? I will give you an alternate word, use that. I saw ho gaya. What a... Now, you go to the Vedanta people and say Mithya, they, they don't understand as Nachayam Prapanchaha is understood. They don't understand it rightly that. They give uh, some kind of a weird, funny uh, meaning. I asked a person, please tell me what is Mithya in English. One word you tell me. Then the person told Anirvachaniya, come on. Anirvachaniya is not English. It is Sanskrit. I am asking you to give a word in English. Now, even within Sanskrit, Mithya is not Anirvachaniya. Anirvachaniya means that which cannot be defined. Mithya means that which is unreal. They may be connected to each other, but they are not synonyms. Therefore, you tell me a word which is synonymous with Mithya. One word. Synonymous with Mithya. You tell they don't tell. I tried and tried and tried and gave up. The person speaks 15 minutes without answering the question. Then I tell Arya leave it. I am sorry that I asked you such a question. Then uh, you tell. Okay, I will tell. I don't have an issue. Myth. Over. The job, for me the job is done. Myth. Nachayam prapanchaha. And I give example also, Raju Sarpa. You studied Vedanta, you must have come across this blessed illustration, Raju Sarpa, a hundred times. So examine it. Anyway, did I digress? Or it is part of the subject only? So I am trying to impress upon you the importance of understanding the unreal nature of the world. If the world has, if the world is real, or it is partly real, partly unreal, you don't have any hope left for emancipation. There is hope for freedom and uh, liberation only because the blessed thing called the world is unreal. Nachayam prapanchaha. In physics you don't have an issue at all. If you know some physics, you don't have any, it is very easy to understand. Because uh, Space and time are mental categories. There is space only when you think of space, and there is time only when you think of time. They are mental categories. And therefore, outside the movement of mind, they don't exist. Okay? Therefore, on that you can easily build that the world that you experience is not real. Because how do you experience the world? Seeing and hearing. Nama Rupa. Rupa Nama. That is how you experience the world. I tell you one thing. You see, this I wanted to tell in yesterday's class. But I did not have enough time or I got digressed, whatever the reason. I did not tell that. Later I thought, oh, I wanted to tell, but I did not tell. Now shall I tell you? Will you pay attention to that? Okay, let me try. The eyes see themselves. The ears hear themselves. Are I st told already? Yes, I told, yeah. The eyes do not see something other than the eyes themselves. The eyes see the eyes only. So what you see with the eyes is on the retina. That is what you see with the eyes. What you hear with the ears is uh, in the eardrum. That is what you hear. The eyes do not see what is outside. The ears do not hear what is outside. And based on the evidence of eyes and ears, you want to construct a real world? How can you? You cannot construct. Basic 
physics you should know, basic science. And also, go to a movie, you see the scenes in continuity, the scene, hero and heroine, they dance. Uh, for three minutes, five minutes, the dance goes on. You see a dance. Dance is continuous, right? It is continuous. If, if it is continuous, it is dance. Otherwise, it is not dance. Huh? So, if I if I say like this, that is dance. If I say, that is not dance. Right? That is some kind of a break. Uh, so, you see dance. But is there a dance on the screen? There is no dance on the screen. What is on the screen? As you see the dance, what is there on the screen? On the screen, eh, there are frames. A frame, a frame, a frame, a frame, a frame. And every frame is independent, separate. And there is a gap between two successive frames. So now what you have on the screen is a frame, gap, next frame, gap, next frame, gap, next frame, gap. That is what you have on the screen. But do you see frame after frame after frame with gap in between? No. You see dance, which is continuous. On the screen, there is no continuity. What you see is continuous. Because continuity defines reality. You believe the dance is real eh? because of the, eh, because it looks continuous. Okay? But it appears continuous. The continuity is in your experience, world experience. In the world there is no continuity. World is like those frames which are momentary. In one second, 16 frames will move. So the duration of one frame is 1 by 16th of a second. That is very momentary. The frames are momentary. And in one second, the screen goes blank 16 times. Okay? That is what the situation on the screen. But what you experience is a beautiful, wonderful dance by the hero and heroine. Is there any connection between what you experience and what is? There is no connection. That's why Shankara, all glory to the great Acharya, he gave the example of Raju Sarpa. Because what is and what you experience has no connection whatsoever. Now, if you have a big heart and understand this much basic physics and connect to the words which I spoke earlier that the love etc. is all your imagination. You should all gel. There should be no issue there. Okay. Therefore, the world is unreal. It appears real only because you are real and you impute your reality to the world. Atmavaidakum sarvam. When you see a serpent and you are afraid, that fear that your experience of the serpent have a touch of reality which is given to the rope and now it appears as serpent. The serpent and serpent, the rope serpent has no reality. Whereas your fear and your experience of the serpent has a touch of reality. That reality of yourself is given to the Raju Sarpa and therefore it appears real. You question it, it vanishes. It is easy. Are you aware from serpents have come? There are no serpents anymore. All serpents are killed anyway. We are living in a jungle of concrete and steel. Where are serpents? If you have some common sense and raise the question, are you aware from serpent will come? Yeah, let me look at it a little more carefully. Put the light on. There is no serpent. It is that simple. It doesn't require great scholarship. This and you need not study books for ten years to understand that momentarily you can see that there is no serpent. The same thing applies to the world also. So 
<clears throat> you see, when the sun shines, there are colors. Vibjar. When the sun sets, the colors disappear. Okay? So where are the colors without the light? There are no colors without the light. Similarly, without you, the Atma, there is no world. There is no world. Atma alone is the real. Under the reality of the Atma, by mistake you give it to the world. And therefore world appears real. Okay? Therefore, Nachayam Prapanchaha. Okay? And uh, uh, shall I continue on these lines? You wake up from sleep. In sleep there is no world. Nobody says, I am sleeping and now, now I declare world is real. <laughs> okay? In sleep there is no world. And you wake up. Now the world experience begins. Right? Now, how this world experience is happening? Like, I wake up. Okay, I am waking up in my bedroom. I am in my bedroom. The lady of the house has already got up and she, is, she has put the coffee pot on. The coffee aroma is coming and touching the nostrils. Right? That is how the world experience begins. Now in this, which is real and which is memory, let us examine. I, I am in my bedroom. Is it memory or is it real? It is memory. Okay? And uh, the lady of the house is already preparing coffee. The lady of the house is memory. She was the lady of the house yesterday, that's why she is the lady of the house today. Right? And then uh, coffee is memory. Coffee is memory. So, the world that you experience is created out of your memory. Okay? Suppose she is brewing something which you have never tasted, then you will not know what it is. Okay? Therefore, you create the world experience out of your own memories. It is like the eyes see themselves, the ears hear themselves, the mind experiences itself. And God gives a name to it as world. The eyes see themselves and give a name part there, like that. Therefore, so what is the point? The point is, you are creating the world out of your memories. You are the creator. This is Tatma Masi. Okay? What is God? The creator. God the creator. Right? But now who is creating the world? You are creating. Now you got the spirit of Tatma Masi. That is how Tatma Masi has come. So you are the creator. Now, to understand yourself correctly, you should give up this belief that a God other than you created this world and you have come into this world and you will go out of this world after some time. And that world is being managed by the God and you are living in it with some happiness and some unhappiness. As long as you believe this way, you are even unfit for self-knowledge. Your self is the false self. It is not the true self. Okay? And you are caught in the falsity of that self and you will not be able to come out of it. Okay? So now you have to rehash, rejig the whole blessed thing. You have to tell yourself, I am creating this world out of my own memories. I am the creator. You have to tell yourself. That is Aham Brahmasmi. This is how it comes. Tatvam see Aham Brahmasmi come from a deep inner churning and understanding. They do not come from books 
Parampara, what parampara? Copy paste parampara. That is how they don't come. They come from the deep churning within. Okay? Therefore, uh, now what are the implications? The, it is not some philosophical um, uh, sermonizing or philosophical uh, intellectualism. No. It is very practical. And if you take this message and examine it in yourself, you can change your life. That is the power of understanding. So, the world in which I live is an unhappy world. It makes me unhappy. Okay? But who is creating the world? I am creating. Therefore, I have to ask the question, why am I creating an unhappy world? Why not create a happy world? You can. You can. Very simple. I am telling for 10 days now, there is no friend, there is no foe, there is only divinity. Okay? Now, why do you create friends and foes? Stop creating foe. Oh, he is foe. He is not a foe. You created a foe. Nobody is a foe. There is no evil. You created, you projected the evil. All are Atma. Why don't you get it? Why don't you create a beautiful world? Create a beautiful world? To get a beautiful world, you have to purchase a roses and put everywhere in the house? That is not how you create a beautiful world. Silly. You create a beautiful world by, by loving all, by including all, by being generous, and by seeing good in all. You see good in all, you have created a good world. You make all people happy, you have created a happy world. But first you should understand that you are the creator. You are creating a world out of your own memories. So, I tell you, as long as you are ignorant of yourself as the creator, your world is limited and it is repetitive. It repeats, the blessed thing repeats day after day after day. So now when uh, the same thing is repeating, it doesn't make you happy or uh, uh, happy or uh, uh, fresh. It doesn't make you. You are accustomed to mechanicalness, which is dullness. Now you are addicted to dullness. And therefore, uh, you have forgotten, you have forgotten what is fresh and what is new. You have forgotten. The rituals are like that too. At least in the ritual, you put some freshness, some newness that gives you the spirit of devotion and God uh, you get in your heart. Atasya Rudra Rupan Jayet Om Namaste Rudra Vanyava Utoda Kya Bhai How long you repeat? How many times you repeat? There is no freshness. The same dull routine you repeat. Are you put some life into it? Make it fresh. The same thing. You make it fresh. You make it new. Don't just create something out of your memory day after day after day after day. Then it becomes mechanical. And it is dull. In uh, the, this, uh, these love marriages also, till the marriage happens, he says, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And once the marriage is over, he will stop saying, I love you. She wants to hear, but he doesn't say. So one lady asked, you are telling I love you a thousand times and therefore I married you, why don't you say I love you anymore? You know what he told? Marriage is over, why should I say I love you anymore? <laughs> eh? And so he doesn't say I love you anymore. Then one day when he was very frustrated, he says, I hate you. 
he stopped saying I love you long back because it has gone into the monotony of existence, the humdrum of existence. So there is no I love you. That freshness of heart is not there. When it becomes repetitive, means mechanical, means a dullness, no newness, no freshness, no love. So he stopped saying I love you. One day he became angry or frustrated and said I hate you. The first time she heard him saying I hate you. Should not say like that. But he said it. Then uh, she became very distressed and he was also a bit uh, repenting, repenting. What a harsh word I said. But again after 10 days he says I hate you. And now he doesn't repent even. And he starts saying it again and again. Four times in a month. And a day comes when let us sit and talk together and settle the matter. That is how they say. And they discover that they cannot settle between themselves. And they go and and, uh, rely on two different attorneys. Do you need any further proof that the world is unreal? Eh? So, you see, you are free, you are the creator. Don't identify with the body. Body doesn't create anything. Be the inner light. And that light is creating the world. The film is not creating the movie. The projector light is creating the movie. The Atma, the inner light is creating the world. And therefore, uh, you give up this self-identification with the body. Memories you are creating out of memories, you know. You give up your self-identification with the past. No more past. When I meet a person, I do not meet... I do not interact based on the memory of the past. I am seeing the person as though for the very first time. I am seeing all of you the first time. I am not seeing the same old faces. Okay. Do you breathe the fresh air or the same old air you breathe? If you breathe the same old air, right? You, you will not be able to live also. You are breathing every time fresh oxygen, life. That's why you are alive, agile. So, therefore, you have to stop identifying with the past. Give up the past, no past. Now you are free from the memory, from the past. Now you can create a new world of harmony and beauty. That is the world. And that world is is pervaded by your own inner light of Atma. Atma va idagum sarvam. All depends upon you. You permit the unreal world to, to appear real. And therefore it appears real. You withdraw your belief in the reality of the world, it is no more real. It is your belief that uh, the world is real, makes the world appear real. So, people believe, uh, we have studied Brahma Sutra Bhashya, the world appears real. We studied Ratna Prabha, still the world appears real. We studied Bhamati, still the world appears real. Now you studied Kalpataru, still the world appears real. Parimala you have not yet studied. So I will study Parimala, then maybe the world becomes real, unreal. You study hundred Parimalas, they are commentaries. The world will remain real only. That is not the way to get to the truth. Okay? Therefore it is your belief that makes the world appear real. You believe that it is real. That is where the, 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 that is the key. Your belief is the key 
which gives life to the world and you believe it is real. Therefore, you withdraw your belief in the reality of the world, then it will just dissolve like a dream. You had a dream yesterday night. Today morning you woke up. How much effort you needed to, to see that the dream is unreal? How much effort you needed? You believed that the dream was real while the dream is was on. It appeared real, right? But the moment you wake up, oh, it was not real. You don't say that. That is the unfortunate part of it. Sometimes the language also works against us. You say a dream, as if something real there. You you have to say that was the dream experience, which is unreal. You have to you have to learn to say unreal. Yesterday night I had a dream, and it was unreal. You have to say that. Suppose in the dream you have borrowed ten thousand dollars. Next day you will go and pay and come back. You don't do that. Why? Because you know very well that it is unreal. And uh, how much uh, effort is required to know that it is unreal? No effort is required. I know it. Instantly I know that it is unreal. No, no, you must have studied some big Vedanta Shastra to know that it is unreal. No. Vedanta Shastra relies upon dream to prove that the world is unreal. Because it is so clear, even to a novice, even to a child, even to an illiterate lay person, it is at once clear like daylight that the dream was unreal. Okay? Therefore, what you need is not uh, some more uh, effort, some more the scholarship, some more methods. That is not what you need. You have to examine your belief in the reality of the world. And learn to withdraw your belief from the reality of the world. You interact with the world, you live in the world. So, but the fact is you do not live in the world. The world lives in you. Therefore, uh, you withdraw your belief in it, the world, it just, uh, it just melts like a dream. Okay? Nachayam prapanchaha. Shall I translate it for you? The world is not. You alone are. Atma vairagam sarvam. So, the idagum sarvam, as idagum sarvam, is unreal. Idagum sarvam, shining in the atma, that atma is real. Like the projector light is real. What all shines in the projector light is unreal. You got the point? So you can say, the what all you see on the screen is the light alone. Light alone is real. You are real. You alone are real. The world is not. That is enough. Nachayam prapanchaha. Let us say, Nashasta, Nashastram, Nashishyo, Nashiksha. Nachatvan, Nachaham, Nachayam prapanchaha. Swarupa vabodho vikalpa sahishnuho Tadeko vashishta shivakke valoham Om purna madhav purna midam 